So one of the um, last properties, actually the second last property uh, we're going to talk about is the multiplication property uh, of continuous time Fourier series. So for X of T is a periodic signal which has Fourier series coefficients A. Uh, y of T is another periodic signal which has Fourier series coefficients given by B sub Ks and where uh, both uh, X and Y are assumed to have exactly uh, the same period which is capital T. Uh, what we're interested in finding is what the Fourier series coefficients of, of this product is, which is um, X of T times Y of T, uh, and which is something you can go ahead and verify on your own, that the period of this product is also going to be exactly the same as the period of, uh, period of X and Y uh, by themselves. Uh, so what we're interested in finding is what are the Fourier series coefficients um, of, of this product. Um, so I'm not going to derive this result here, I'm just gonna give you um, uh, the result directly. Um, so uh, CKs, it can be shown, uh, are given as this expression, um, summation from L going from minus infinity to infinity, A sub L times B K minus L. Um, so that's a result uh, which I'm giving you without a proof. Um, one of the things you may notice um, is, you should notice, is that this is actually um, the discrete convolution um, uh, between the Fourier series coefficients. This is the discrete convolution of AKs and BKs. So what we're, what this really implies is, is this, if, there, if there are two time domain signals, X and Y, both of them being periodic, um, you multiply them together in the time domain. Uh, the result of this in the Fourier domain is that the Fourier series coefficients of these two signals individually are convolved together. So it's multiplication in the time domain is equivalent to uh, convolution in the, uh, in the Fourier domain. And this is a theme that is gonna be recurring over and over again, um, which you're gonna keep on uh, seeing uh, as we move on uh, further down the course. Um, as far as the proof is concerned, I am, as I said, not going to prove this here. Uh, this is uh, one of the end of chapter problems as well. Um, you please go ahead, uh, try to do it on your own. Um, and I leave this off as, as an exercise. So this is the uh, last property we're gonna talk about, which is the Parsevals relationship. Uh, so once again, if X of T has a 40 series decomposition given by SFK, so in other words, this is the 40 series decomposition. What Parsevals relationship tells us is that if I were to compute the average power in the periodic signal X of T, uh, so if, if the average power in the periodic signal, um, so from some of the notation that we've uh, used uh, earlier, so this really is um, the infinity as well. Um, so th this is given as one upon T integral over the period, time period T, um, absolute value of X of T, absolute word dt. So this is the average power in the periodic signal. Uh, what Parseval's relationship says is that this average power is actually equal to the sum of the absolute value squared of all the uh, Fourier series coefficients. Um, and uh, I am going to go ahead and give you a proof for this over here. Um, so let's go ahead and try to prove that. Um, so, so what is the proof for this? So let me start out with trying to write what this expression is by plugging in what X of T is from the Fourier series decomposition. So for the left-hand side, I have one upon T, one upon T integral over T X of T absolute value squared times DT. I can write this as one upon T summation integral over T and X of T absolute uh, squared is actually X of T times the X conjugate of T, right? So, uh, so complex, so the magnitude squared of a complex number is a certain complex number multiplied by uh, its, uh, its conjugate. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna replace um, X of T from here into this expression as, as in X of T here as well as X of T here. Right, so what I get is 
this is one upon t integral over t and in place of x of t let me just let me just plug in what the definition from the synthesis equation is so this is e raised to the power j k omega naught t so this is x of t times and uh, let me just use another variable which is m and not k uh, so this is a m e raised to the power j m omega naught t whole conjugate dt so this really is x of t this really is x conjugate of t right now since everything is linear i can pull out the summations so this is summation over k this is summation over m um, a k can come out of the um, of, of the integral as well um, and and this thing conjugate this thing conjugate whole thing conjugate is just am conjugate times e raised by minus j m omega naught t so i can put this am conjugate outside outside of the integral over here as well so this is a m conjugate and then i have an integral over one period of, of the signal um, times e raised to power j k omega naught t times e raised to power minus j m omega naught t times dt where this minus is ready because of the of, of the conjugation uh, operation so um, this one is equal to one upon t summation from k summation to m a k a m conjugate this is integral over one period t and this is e raised to part j k minus m omega naught t times dt now what i have inside this integral here is if you recall from one of the review modules that i uh, presented earlier um, this thing is going to be equal to uh, zero whenever k is not equal to m and it's going to be equal to capital t only when k equals m and that's one once again that's because of the reason when k is not equal to m you're integrating over a sinusoid uh, over integer number of periods and the area under that sinusoid in the real as well as in the complex in the imagined domain is going to be equal to zero except when that's a dc signal and when that's a dc signal the area under the curve is just going to be equal to t so this thing here is really equal to if you recall from our earlier discussions this is t times uh, delta k minus m so if i put this back here so this is one upon t summation over k summation over m a sub k a m conjugate multiplied by delta k minus m uh, times t this t cancels with this t um, and what i observe next is that this thing is equal to one only when k equals m right so when k equals m in other words only when m equals k so within this summation um within this summation so if in order to explain this better uh, let me just write it like this this is k and this is a k and then this is summation over m this is a m conjugate delta k minus m and of course uh, within the summation within the summation the the only uh, only term that is not equal to zero corresponds to the case when m equals k so what we're really saying here is that this thing here this thing here is really a k conjugate and as a result this turns out to be equal to summation over k a k times a k conjugate which is nothing but a k absolute squared so there you go that that's the proof of a parcel relationship so just to just to make 
uh, things like here. So this k goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, and all of the the summations are in fact when I say k, it's actually k going from minus infinity to plus infinity. M also goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. So what, once again, what the parser with relationship is saying is that if you want to compute the average power in a periodic signal, um, that can either be computed by uh, by integrating in the time domain or by just computing the Fourier series coefficients. If you have the Fourier series coefficients, all you need to do to find out what the average power is, so just to take the absolute squared of the 46 coefficients and add them up and those are going to give you um, the, the, the that sum is going to give you the average power. Um, I also want to spend some time um, in I also want to spend some time in trying to clarify um, one other aspect um, so that being so say I were to compute this thing here 1 upon t um, integral over t um, a k e raised to part j k omega naught t squared dt and what this really is remember uh, what we're saying is that x of t is made up of all is the composition of all of these these terms here so where the uh, term corresponding to one particular k is the kth harmonic. So k equals one is the kth harmonic. k equals two is the, uh, the second harmonic. Uh, k equals three, because the term corresponding to that is the third harmonic. Uh, so what I've done is I've just picked one of those terms up and I'm just trying to find the power in that uh, contribution of the kth harmonic in this inside the signal x of t. And you clearly see from here is that this is equal to one upon t integral over t absolute value of a k squared and then and then what is the absolute value of e raised by j k omega naught t squared that's just one that's just one so what you get here is just a k absolute whole squared okay so this is the so this is this is the power in the contribution of the kth harmonic And if a sub k whole squared, absolute squared, is the power in the contribution of the kth harmonic, what we're really saying is, and, and the x of t is made up of a composition of all of these harmonics, what we're really saying is that the power in x of t is actually equal to the sum of the powers of each and every one of those harmonics. So that's what really what Parsable's relationship uh, tells us.